UFO researchers have long suspected that a government cover-up has prevented the public from knowing the full story about visitors from other planets. In 1973, for instance, the director of the FBI denied that his agency had ever investigated UFOs. In 1976, the agency released more than 1,100 pages of UFO information that it had collected over many years. What forced the disclosure? It was the Freedom of Information Act. Tonight, in part three of our series, UFOs, the best evidence, George Knapp reports on other secrets that have been pried out of the government. UFO skeptics often ask, if there are aliens visiting Earth, why don't they announce themselves by flying over the White House? The answer is, UFOs did fly over the White House twice. It happened in July 1952. As the New York Times reported, seven eerie glowing objects were spotted by pilots in the air and people on the ground. Twelve different radar operators tracked the UFOs at speeds of up to 7,000 miles per hour. A week later, the objects were back again. When jets were scrambled, the lights either disappeared or zoomed away. The Air Force explained that what everyone had seen was a temperature inversion. To a man, the radar operators disagreed, but the official explanation is the one that stuck. Government explanations of UFOs are often just plain wrong. In 1965, thousands of people from Canada to Mexico watched a formation of UFOs maneuver in the skies. The Air Force said it was the constellation Orion, even though at the time, Orion could only be seen from the other side of the planet. Planet. A UFO landing at White Sands Missile Base was said to be a sighting of the planet Venus, to which one UFO buff responded, it was unforgettable the night Venus landed on the gypsum flats of New Mexico. The standing joke in UFO circles is that for every 200 UFO sightings, the Air Force can explain away 201. The possibility that our government might withhold or distort information about UFOs might seem far-fetched until you read the mountains of evidence compiled from the government's own files, evidence that strongly suggests a cover-up. The U.S. military first started seeing UFOs in World War II. Pilots called them Foo Fighters. We thought they were a German secret weapon. The Germans thought they were ours. An explosion of civilian sightings in 1947 caught the military by surprise. Secret investigations were begun. A joint study by the FBI and Army concluded the flying saucer situation is not all imaginary. Something is really flying around. That report was kept secret until 1976. Yes, there was a degree of secrecy. Um, in certain cases, there might be sightings on radar, and we didn't want the Russians to know we had a radar here or a radar there. Class is correct, but only to a point, because most of the early UFO sightings were by eyewitnesses, not radar. In New Mexico, for instance, over a two-year period, dozens of people reported seeing green fireballs over sensitive military installations. But when radar and cameras were dispatched to those installations, the fireballs mysteriously shifted someplace else. A 1949 study by scientists at Los Alamos Lab stated the fireballs deserve serious consideration. Some have suggested the saucer craze of the 40s and 50s was a byproduct of Cold War tensions and fears. Both the U.S. and the USSR conducted secret studies to find out if the other side was behind the UFOs, and both concluded early on that the capabilities of the flying disks seemed beyond human technology. This secret report, done in 1948 by the Air Force and Naval Intelligence, is among the most fascinating UFO documents ever to surface, because it wasn't supposed to exist. A confidential memo at the end of the report ordered that all copies should be destroyed, but one copy survived and was finally pried out of the Pentagon in 1985. It's a study of more than 200 of the earliest UFO sightings, including one that occurred in June 1947 near Lake Mead. An Air Force pilot saw a formation of six UFOs. The report notes the UFOs are some type of flying craft, not weather balloons or hallucinations, that sighting reports were made by experienced personnel, and that the origin of flying saucers is not ascertainable. 
The overall effort to study saucers was called Project Sign, with headquarters at Wright Field in Ohio. In 1949, Sign personnel wrote a top-secret report concluding UFOs were extraterrestrial craft. When the report made it to the desk of Chief of Staff General Hoyt Vandenberg, though, he rejected it and ordered all copies burned. This rejection from the top was, in the view of many, the death knell for objective study of UFOs. A few weeks later, Project Sign produced another final report, saying its findings were inconclusive. That report was accepted, and soon after, Project Sign became Project Grudge. Grudge evaluated reports on the premise that UFOs could not exist. According to a later report by the Library of Congress, it was the job of Grudge to explain them all. Despite this slant, 23% of Grudge cases remained a mystery. Grudge staffers decided these cases were psychologically motivated. The first official declaration that people who see UFOs are crazy. The government established an intensive program of ridicule against anyone who said they saw flying saucers. And fear of ridicule was the foundation on which the cover-up was placed. Nobody likes to be ridiculed. The sightings continued nonetheless. In 1952, there were more sightings than the five previous years combined, including the Washington, D.C. incidents. Yet another study was launched, Project Blue Book. Blue Book today is notorious in UFO circles as a whitewash. There is considerable evidence the project was far from objective. The man appointed to head Blue Book, Captain Edward Rappelt, says he was told in the very beginning that the powers that be are anti-flying saucer. To stay in favor, it behooves one to follow suit. Rappelt later resigned from the military and wrote a book about what he says was the Blue Book cover-up and the reality of flying saucers. The continued increase in UFO sightings was a source of concern to the CIA, and a new strategy was born, debunking. A group of CIA-connected scientists was assembled in secret to evaluate UFOs. The so-called Robertson panel spent all of 12 hours in a roundtable discussion about a handful of UFO cases. The panel concluded that UFOs are not a threat to national security, but that continued reporting of UFOs is a threat. The recommendation? The government should take immediate steps to strip UFOs of their aura of mystery through a program of public education. The final report even used the term debunking. The debunking included spying on UFO witnesses and the infiltration of UFO organizations by the CIA and FBI. The Air Force tried to insinuate that saucers were earthly inventions by leaking information about an unwieldy craft called the Avro Disc. A two-seater, ready soon, may be the car or chopper of the future. Help wanted, a crew of little green men. The strategy included the silencing of military personnel through intimidation. Bill Cooper served in both the Air Force and the Navy and says he and three other sailors witnessed a UFO off the coast of Hawaii. When we uh, arrived back in port, um, we were debriefed by an uh, Office of Naval Intelligence officer who basically the gist of the debriefing was is you didn't see anything and you're not going to talk about anything and if you do you're going to be in deep trouble. A similar order was issued to hundreds of airmen at a base in Alaska who watched two UFOs play cat and mouse with Air Force jets. One witness who asked to remain anonymous recalls the order that was issued. A gag order in essence that what you thought you saw and heard on the previous day to this directive you did not see and you did not hear and it did not happen. Even retired military personnel have felt the squeeze. If you were of my vintage uh, and you were retired from the military and someone said, you open your mouth and that's the end of your retirement pay, uh, you think not only once, but you think quite a few times. For three decades, the military has publicly scoffed at UFOs, but it's been another matter behind the scenes. A secret order issued to Air Force base commanders in 1960 stated, UFOs should be treated as, quote, serious business, directly related to national security. Public pressure spurred Congress to hold hearings about UFOs in the mid-60s, and the Air Force decided enough is enough. It commissioned what was to be the ultimate UFO study, conducted by Edward Condon of the University of Colorado. Condon was a respected scientist, but was hardly impartial about UFOs. Before the study even began, he said in a speech that the government should get out of the UFO business. There's nothing to it. He later wrote the authors of UFO books should be horsewhipped. There is even evidence that the study's conclusions were 
were written before the project even began. To the surprise of few, the committee declared that further study of UFOs would be a waste of time. The Air Force used this as its reason to finally end Project Blue Book. None of the evidence that I have examined would indicate any proof at all uh, that we are being visited by extraterrestrials. We have not been hiding anything. The investigations have been made public. Call up an Air Force base today to report a UFO and you'll be told the military no longer collects such information. It all ended with Blue Book. Government documents contradict these statements. A 1969 order by Air Force General C.H. Bolander reveals that UFO reports which could affect national security are not part of the Blue Book system and should continue to be handled through standard Air Force procedure. UFO researchers have long suspected that Blue Book was merely for public consumption, that another secret UFO program program existed to handle the most sensitive cases. The Bolander memo may verify these suspicions. There are other indications that the policy continues. Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque has been the site of numerous UFO incidents, including four separate incidents in August 1980. Security police reported UFO landings in and around nuclear weapons storage areas. Base radar equipment was knocked out during the landings. A secret Air Force report about the incident states the Air Force is no longer publicly active in UFO research, but still has an interest in all UFO sightings over Air Force installations. The document also reveals that several other government agencies actively investigate legitimate sightings through covert cover. Does this mean CIA? The CIA responds to UFO requests in this fashion. There is no CIA program to actively collect information on UFOs, nor has there been one since the 1950s. This statement flies in the face of numerous reports squeezed out of the agency by freedom of information lawsuits. A series of internal memos dated 1976 make repeated references to UFO research, UFO studies, CIA UFO experts, and agency personnel who are monitoring the UFO phenomenon. Phenomenon. The reluctance to admit an interest in UFOs dates back at least to 1952. An internal letter from CIA's weapons chief states, it is strongly urged that no indication of CIA interest reach the press or public in light of their alarmist tendencies. Officially, CIA and other government agencies say their lack of interest is because UFOs pose no threat to national security, yet UFOs have made alarming intrusions at our most sensitive military bases. As the Washington Post reported, UFOs visited five separate nuclear missile launch sites near the Canadian border during a two-week period in 1975, one right after the other. In at least one case, the UFOs tampered with the launch codes of ICBM missiles. Fighter planes were unable to catch the UFOs, which makes the government explanation that these were mystery helicopters seem specious. Mystery helicopters that can outrace F-16s visiting nuclear missile bases? If this isn't national security, what is? Oddly, the government has used the national security excuse to withhold UFO data. Stan Friedman and others fought all the way to the Supreme Court to get UFO documents from the National Security Agency. All they got was a summary of the documents. Here it is, legal affidavit. NSA and so forth. The trouble is, as you start to go through this document, you rather quickly find that a lot of it isn't really there. And I won't stop because you'll see how many pages are really full of good information. Uh, to make a long story short, approximately 75% of this document isn't there. It's the one, it's the biggest secret in the history of mankind and the government is not going to let this out. Who's not going to let it out? Is there a secret government within the government? And what, if anything, do UFOs have to do with the mutilation of cattle in Nevada and elsewhere? More on these topics tomorrow. George Knapp, Eyewitness News 8. Tomorrow night, George continues a look at the UFOs and the debate about their existence. Part 4 focuses on numerous encounters between UFOs and American astronauts.